times uh, in, in Sunday school the last couple of weeks, and I'm just going to go ahead and deal with it a little bit today, and, um, and let the Lord say what we have, what He would have to say. Um, last Sunday, uh, for my message, I, I gave you the title of um, "The Righteous Are as Bold as a Lion." That was a topic. Uh, that we started out with last week, and that scripture comes from Proverbs uh, the 28th chapter. Let me get in and read it to you. Uh, if you're taking notes, you can go ahead and jot this down. This was our scripture um, text from last week. Uh, once again, this is Proverbs the 28th chapter, verses number one. The Bible says that the wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Now, this is what the Bible says about the righteous. Who are the righteous? Those who have believed on Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's, those are the righteous. Those who have been redeemed. Those who have been washed in the blood. Those who have given Christ their life, these are the righteous. I am righteous. I talked about this last week. I am righteous not because I am perfect, but I am righteous because I have believed on the Son of God. I have accepted him as the atonement, as the payment for my sins. I have been born of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God lives in me, and this is why... I am righteous. This is very important. My righteousness does not come from my works. It doesn't come from the things that I do. That's not what makes me righteous. What makes me righteous is that I have believed on the Son of God, and therefore righteousness is a gift to me. Because I have believed on the Son of God, righteousness has been gifted to me. Uh, matter of fact, let me show you that. Let's go to the book of Romans. Let's go to the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. I'm just going to let the Lord lead me here. We're going to talk and see what the Lord will say. Uh, Romans, the fifth chapter, very quickly, one of my favorite scriptures. Romans, the fifth chapter, if you go down to verse number two, it says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. We have access uh, uh, by grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Uh, if you go to Okay, drop down to verse number 17. Drop down to verse number 17. We stand in this grace. The Bible says we have access to this grace. We stand in this grace. Now drop down to verse number 17. It says, For if by one man's offense death reigned, by one much more they which have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ shall reign in life by the one Jesus Christ. Who shall reign? Those who have received the gift of righteousness. I did earn it, didn't work for it, but I have received it. It has been given to me because I have believed on the Son of God. Therefore, by faith, I am made righteous. I am born again. That's what it means. That's what we're talking about. You can only become righteous by the new birth of spirits. That's the only way to become righteous. There's only one way to become righteous, and it is by the new birth experience. If you haven't been born again, then you are not righteous. You are still in your flesh, you are still in your sins, and you're on the way to hell. But if you have received Christ, if you've been born again, you have been born of the Holy Ghost, then you have been made righteous by that new birth experience. You are born again. You are righteous by birth. It is your birthright. That's what he has made you to be. And so when we deal with righteousness, that's what we're talking about. It is the gift of God. I didn't earn it. He gave it to me because I believed on his son. Now, we just read this, um, Psalms 28, verse number 1. It says, those who are righteous 
are bold as a lion. In other words, when you come into this relationship with God, you should have a boldness with you. You should have a confidence with you. You should have a confidence in your stance and in your position with God. You have been born again, listen to this, to win. You have been born again to win. You have been born again to rule. The Bible says in uh, Romans 5 and 17, you have been born again that you might reign. Reign. Reign means to rule. To be in um, control. To be in authority. To be in a position as like a king. That's what it means. To reign. So we are called by God to reign in this life. Listen to this. You as a child of God, you are never a victim. There is no time in your life when you are a victim. I don't care how bad it looks. You are not a victim. You can't be a victim. Why? Because you are born of God. You are born of God. There, it's impossible. It is impossible for you to be a victim. Let me show you something else. Let's go to the book of, um, let's go to John. The book of John. Let me show you something. I'm going to read this from the Amplified Bible. John 16, chapter, I'm going to read verse 33. Matter of fact, I'll read 32 and 33. The point that I'm making to you right now is that you are never a victim. I'm going to give you scripture. Give you scripture so that you would know that no matter how bad or how crazy life gets or looks, you are never a victim. You are never on the battle. You have been positioned by God. Your position is eternal. It does not fluctuate. It doesn't change. It doesn't come and go. It's a fixed position. It is a fixed position. Every day you are in the same spot. Regardless of your conditions, you are in the same spot. We talked about this a little bit last week. Uh, when we deal with authority. The person who is the mayor of Pompano, Fisher, he is the mayor wherever he is. That's his position. If he's in the office, he's the mayor. If he's in a restaurant, he's the mayor. If he's on the football field, he's the mayor. It doesn't matter where you find him. As long as his term is in, he is the mayor. He is appointed to that position. He is appointed to that place. That is the authority that he carries, not just when he's in the office, but wherever he is. You are a child of God. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. You are above all principles and power. That is the position that you have. It doesn't matter if you're in church or at home or in the car or on the job. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be in public buying groceries. You are still a child of God seated at the right hand of the Father and you are in authority. You don't have to be in church to resist the devil. Amen. You don't have to be in church to resist your enemy. You can be on the football field because you don't have no guarantee when the trouble going to come. The trouble may come on the football field. It may come. You may be in the line at Puppets and begin to feel funny in your body. Begin to, begin to feel trouble in your body. You may not be able to make it to the church. You may not be able to get your cell phone out and call somebody to join with you in prayer. You have to know who you are. You might have to know. You, you might not have the time to reach out to someone. You have to know who you are. Amen. And even in the line that published, you are still in a position of authority. You are still the child of God. You are still above whatever it is that's attacking your body. And if you open your mouth in faith and speak to it, it'll leave you alone because that's who you are. Amen. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who God made you. It was not your doing. He did it for you. All right. Uh, I told you to go to John 16 chapter. I'm going to read this from the Amplified. From the Amplified. John 16, verse number 32. You're never defeated. You're never defeated. Listen. He says, uh, but take notice. The hour is coming and it has arrived. When you will all be dispersed and scattered. Every man to his own home. Leaving me alone. Yet, I am not alone because the Father is with me. 
I have told you these things so that in me you may um, have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. In the world, let me read that to you again. In the world, in this life, on your job, in your home, driving down the road, he says, in this world, you are going to have distress, frustration. You're going to have tribulations and trials. In this world, you're going to have it. In this world, you're going to have tribulations, you're going to have trials, you're going to have distress, and he says, you're going to have frustrations in this world. It doesn't matter who you are, you're going to have it. Doesn't matter how long you've been saved, you're going to have it. It doesn't matter what you are, what you do for a living, you're going to have it. He says, in this world, as long as you're in this world, trouble going to come to your house. It ain't come to you because you did something wrong. Trouble just come just because you're in this world. He says, but as long as you're in this world, you're going to face trouble. But then he says, but be of good courage or be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. He says, in this world you're going to have trouble. He says, but be of good cheer, be undaunted, because I have overcome this world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Jesus says, I have conquered this world for you. I didn't conquer it for myself. I didn't go to the cross for myself. He says, I went for you. I whooped the world for you. I defeated the world for you. I defeated sickness and poverty and disease for you. Be a good cheer in this world. It's going to test you, but don't be undone. He says, but be undone because I Man. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. You're going to be attacked. But he says, don't be bothered by it. Don't be dismayed by it. Because I've already conquered what's testing you. I've already conquered what's bothering you. This is what he said. I conquered it for you. I went to the fight for you. That's why I tell you, you are never a victim. That's why what you say in your moment of testing is so important. What you say in your mouth is so important when you're going through. Because if you say you're weak, then you are weak. But if you stand on the word of God and say I'm strong, then that's what you are. Your confession, the Bible says you're going to live by what you say. What you say out of your mouth, especially in times of frustration, is very important. He says, I have whooped this world. I have overcome this world. I didn't do it for me. I did it for you. That's why the Bible says, um, uh, Proverbs uh, 28, he says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. You, be, you should be bold towards your trial. Be bold towards your affliction. Be bold towards what you're going through. Be bold towards whatever it is you're facing. He says, be bold. Why? Because the righteous, those who know who they are, those who are righteous, those who are born again, who understand that I have faced this world for them. He says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. They don't play. They know who they are, and they are aggressive against their enemies. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get into what I'm going to talk about today. If you, uh, Let's go with me to the book of um, go to Luke, book of Luke. The book of Luke, that's just a little bit of what we talked about last week. But today we're going to go to the book of Luke. <coughs> I, want you, I want to leave you with this thought, and I said this in Sunday school today, and, and the Lord brought it back to me. And so I'm going to go ahead and talk about it a little bit. Uh, but I want to leave you with the thought that giants do fall. Amen. Giants do fall. And let's go to the book of Luke, the 11th chapter. For the sake of time, I'm going to read just verse number uh, 9 and 10, but you can read the whole first verses there that deals with the parable. But I'm just going to take out verses 9 and 10 that, te that talk about or mainly deal with what I want to deal with as far as the prayer 
And once again, I want to say to you that giants do fall. And you have been strategically placed by God to bring them down. You have been strategic, strategically placed and positioned by God to bring down every giant you face. Amen. That's who you are. That's how you've been positioned. That's how you've been empowered. You have been given the use of the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee, the name of Jesus has been empowered. The name of Jesus carries weight. The name of Jesus carries authority. When you utilize that name, you utilize the authority. When you utilize the name, you utilize the power. It is our job to take advantage of the name that has been given to us to use, which is the name of Jesus. And that name is above every, when the Bible talks about that name being above every name, it's saying that there is no name, there is nothing you can mention or nothing you can call that is above that name. Everything in this world, the Bible says, and the world to come, the Bible says it is subject to the name of Jesus. Yes. There is no pain that you can feel that's not subject to the name of Jesus. There is no heartache that you can feel that is not subject. Whatever's troubling your children is subject to the name of Jesus. When I say that it's subject, I'm saying that by the name of Jesus, whatever it is has to submit itself. It has to surrender itself. Yes. What do you mean when you're talking about in the name of Jesus is above every name? Sickness, cancer is subject to the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus has been invested with power. It has been invested with authority. Yes. And so when you use the name of Jesus, cancer has to obey you. If the cancer is growing in the body, and you, in the name of Jesus, speak to the cancer, the cancer has to stop growing. The cancer has to leave the body. Amen. The cancer has to stop growing. It has to leave the body because the cancer is subject to the name. Yes. Jesus said in verse number 33, he says, in this world, you're going to have distress. You're going to have tribulation. You're going to have trials. He says, but don't be alarmed. Don't be uh, distressed. He says, don't be, uh, 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 don't trip out about it. Why? Because I have overcome the world. I have defeated the world for you. Yes. That includes cancer. That includes cancer. That includes cancer. That includes any sickness. Any sickness, any infection in the body, any disease, any bacteria in the body, any issues with your finance, it doesn't matter what it is, the Bible says that it all has been conquered and submitted under the name of Jesus. Amen. Now it's up to you to believe on the name and to use the name. It is up to me to believe on the name and to utilize the name. Because the name is greater than anything I will ever face in this world or in the world to come. Yeah. All right, come on. I told you to go to the book of Luke, chapter number 11. This is where the parable is concerning prayer about the man who goes to his friend's house and he knocks on the door for food, but the friend is in the bed sleep. You don't want to get up. Uh, matter of fact, let's just go to verse number five. 
verse number five. Uh, Luke 11, verse number five. It says, 